Hey there, it's John with Heroes and the Legends. Today I have another commander opening for you. We're going to open up the Open Hostility deck. And if you watched the last episode, we opened Breed, uh, Breed Lethality. And this isn't going to be too much different. So basically, we're going to quickly look at the contents that are in the box, what you get when you purchase this product, and then we'll quickly thumb through the deck. And I'll give you some quick thoughts on the cards and on the deck. Now, uh, I did a video where I completely reviewed this deck and all the cards in it. I'll link that at the end of the video if you're interested in seeing that. So if you are maybe more looking for a review of the actual deck, that might be the better video. This is more of an unboxing. So uh, here's your first thing that you get here, and it's the uh, oversized foil. And you get an oversized foil of one of the uh, main commanders, which is the four color commanders in each of these products. You don't get oversized foils for the partner commanders, so I think that's worth noting. And of course, this is Sasuke of the Unyielding. We'll open up the box here, and we get a couple things. Here's the cards. We get the uh, quick reference guide, which is basically in all the products nowadays. And I'll open this folder up for you, or this poster up for you too, real quick, so you can see it. But basically, it talks a little bit about the commander, the partner commanders, uh, which is kind of nice, because there isn't a lot of information on a lot of these characters out there yet. And uh, it talks a little bit about commander, of course. And then, on the back, you got a deck list. I mentioned this in the last video. I liked when they used to show like what set these cards came from when they're reprints and stuff like that. Uh, over on the right, they use some of the space for ads, which, and this poster is actually a little smaller than it used to be. And not that that's a bad thing, because sometimes the posters were a little too cumbersome to like fold up and, and put away and stuff. So this is a lot simpler. So it's not necessarily bad, just kind of is what it is. All right, let's get into the cards themselves. If I can find the plastic, there we go. If you watched the last video, you saw that the other one was like almost like completely unwrapped. <laughs> I was getting worried for a second that like somebody returned it and took stuff out of it, but it was okay. Uh, this one's sealed pretty tight, so that's good. This must be a manufacturing issue. Okay, so I'm going to take a second to zoom in and I'll be right back. We'll look at the cards. All right, so let's quickly go through the cards that we get here. Of course, we've seen Siskiya, the Unyielding. Uh, we saw the large version. Here's the regular foil. Uh, we have Revos, a Soul Tender. This is one of the kind of key cards of the set. This card actually is maybe the most valuable card at this point in the set, but do keep in mind, they print a lot of these. So even if they're sold out locally around you, uh, there's going to be a lot of these over the course of the next year. If you want one of these, you'll be able to pick it up very easily. Probably cheaper than retail price in a lot of cases, so just keep that in mind. Uh, if you pick a deck, and I mentioned this in the last video, if you pick a deck to play with, don't try to pick the one that is the most financial value at the time or anything like that. Pick the one that seems fun to you, because financially these will all decline. Uh, but it, this is a very cool card, though. And again, this will be in foil. We have another of the partners. This is Tana the Blood Sower, also in foil. And I mentioned this last time too, but great foiling process. These look really good. You don't see the foil kind of fraying on the sides. They're not warped. Uh, it looks really strong. And we have Tim Timna the Weaver. It's the last foil partner commander. Okay. Uh, quickly, we'll look at the tokens. You get a Sapperling token. These are double-sided, so you get... I always get confused when they do that. <laughs> okay, now, am I missing something here? But when you put the same token on both sides, even though it is a different picture, so maybe you prefer a certain picture over another one, but you can't really use it. It's a sapperling token, that's all it is. You know what I mean? Like, now if you put something else on the back, like a spirit token, then it can either be a sapperling token or a spirit token, but I mean, kind of why bother putting it on two sides anyway? Enough of that. <laughs> all right, so you get another two sided sapperling token. Uh, here's another one, and another one, and another one, and another. I guess these are all sapperlings. I forget which tokens this set makes, but apparently it's just sapperlings. There you go. So they're all just double-sided sapperlings. I mean, they do give you the two different pieces of art, so I guess that would be the appeal there since they don't truly don't have any others, and I guess it wouldn't make sense to put a magic back on this one and not the other. So anyway, uh, let's start going through some of the cards, and I'll kind of point out the highlights, but I'll go sort of quick. I don't want this video to take forever, but... Um, I'll try to point out at least the new cards when they come up, or cards that are going to be kind of key cards. 
This is one of the key cards I was saying in this deck, the <laughs> Slesnia Guild Mage. Uh, this deck's all about um, just super aggressive, kind of going wide with a lot of uh, sapling tokens and stuff like that. This card does exactly what this deck's trying to do. Not only does it create more tokens, but also pumps your whole team. Skull Clamp, a great card. Works really well in this deck, too, with all the, with all the plus or the 1-1 one, one tokens. Soul Ring, always good to see these in this product. Saw a lot of Felwar stones this time around, too. Some Signets. Only one Signet in this particular uh, one, though. Here's one of the new cards, Evolutionary Escalation. Uh, yeah, this is a new card. It's a little bit uh, high variance. I mean, this could backfire at times, but um, one of the new inclusions. Necrogenesis is in here, too. Another way to create Sapperlings. Um, Fren Frenzied Fug is also a uh, new card, so actually kind of cool to see that. There's a lot of charms in this particular deck, which is awesome too. Sylvan Reclamation, another of the new cards. Even get a split card there, Order Chaos. Charging Cinderhorns, another one of the new cards. Stonehoof Chieftain, another new creature. Primeval Protector, another new creature. <laughs> Conqueror's Flail, a new piece of equipment. Divergent Transformations, this is the Undaunted card in this particular deck. Uh, each deck has one, there's a cycle, one for each color. This one gets the red one, uh, all good for multiplayer. Uh, here's a Mythic, let's we'll see if the Mythics are kind of together like they were in the last deck. Uh, but actually a really cool Mythic for this deck uh, from Fate Reforged. You get a God in this one, Iros, a God of Victory. Which is really awesome from the Theros block. Dem Protector, a classic card from <laughs> recent history, I guess. <laughs> so just rotated out of standard, but a uh, great card. Mentor of the Meek works phenomenal in this deck as well. Mirror Entity, another key card to this deck and the strategy. We have Alicia who smiles at death. Manic Gorger Hydra can be a good card. I've definitely played that in cubes and it's done well. Another card that goes along with the theme very well, Wild Beastmaster. Ankle Shanker also can be real good in certain situations in this deck. Sunforger, nice little reprint. This is a good card for sure. So as we get through these cards, you kind of see what this deck's trying to do. There's a bunch of small creatures and get them big, just attack in with like big alpha attacks. And we're gonna move into some non-basic lands. We have a pain land. We got a Buddy Land, Sonic Orchard, Grand Coliseum, that's a cool reprint too. It's actually, uh, this is one of those cards, I mean, they could have probably put like in every one of these decks <laughs> and it probably would have been pretty cool, but I think it's the only one that has it. Uh, we get another Pain Land, Moss Warp Bridge. You'll notice Hideaway Lands, I think this particular deck has a few of them, if I recall. And here's another Check Land, another Hideaway Land. Another check land, another hideaway land, and we have another new card with Grave Upheaval. Another new one with Treacherous Train. And we get into some of the uh, non-basic lands, or I'm sorry, the basic lands. So I mentioned this again in the last video, the art on these are incredible though. Kev Walker, Rebecca Gway, and Mark Poole each did a cycle. So uh, here is the Rebecca Gway Plains, Mark Poole Plains. Ken Walker planes. They do a good job in these decks making sure you get like one of each if there's only three lands. So that's actually pretty awesome. So you can buy the product and you kind of get a sample of all the art, which is phenomenal. All right, then there's Ash Barons, which is another of the new cards. Command Tower, always good to have. Falling Wilds, Gruel Turf, Jungle Shine, just the last few non-basics here. So 
So originally, it's our last card is a Terramorphic Expanse. So uh, overall, for this product, I would say uh, my review isn't much different probably from last time if you watched the last video. Uh, if you love Commander, if you're a casual player especially that maybe just wants something to pull out of the closet and play with friends every once in a while, this is a great product. I mean, for $35. And honestly, you can get it cheaper if you look around. As a matter of fact, there's really good deals if you want to buy all five at once. You can get them pretty cheap. Or even not, even just buying one deck here and there, uh, you can get them pretty cheap. Just to give you a quick idea of how I picked mine up, I went on Friday morning to my local game store, and they didn't have them. <laughs> so they said they didn't get them in yet, uh, which I thought was a little weird because uh, I know with LGS is I kind of concern that this particular LGS maybe is having trouble keeping up with its payments. Maybe that's why they didn't get uh, the cards on time. So either that or they were in a box somewhere and no one wanted to bother to look for them. But uh, so I left there and checked out Target, Walmart. They weren't on the shelves yet. So I didn't actually get them until after the weekend. I stopped by Target on um, on Monday morning and three of the decks were there. So I picked those up uh, for retail price and then I went ahead and, and ordered the last two from a store online, which was, I found a small store that actually had a pretty good deal, but the store I found uh, sold them for under retail price. And I got the last two for, I think it was one for 30 and one for like 25 or something like that. So that was actually pretty good. Uh, you will find that at least early on, there'll be different prices for some of them because again, the value of cards is still is something people are looking at at this point, but don't be reeled in by that because again, they're going to print a ton of these and that's going to bring the values down for these cards quite a bit before all is said and done with them. So, uh, if you want to pick up one of these decks, pick up the one that looks good to you. I mean, if you're into aggressive decks and a strong token strategy, in this case, Sapperling tokens, this will be the deck for you. You'll have fun with this deck. If that doesn't sound fun, look at the other four. There's a lot of great things. The deck we saw in the last unboxing was the Breathe Lethality deck, which of course, was all about plus one plus one counters and growing your creatures doubling counters there's a lot of different things you can do to tweak that deck this deck's a little more straightforward i mean yes there are things you can do to enhance how to grow your creatures or power them out i i one thing i would change about this deck probably if i were to try to upgrade it i would put more things in that are going to pump my whole team like uh effects that are your plus x plus x plus trample type effects like if i could work a few more of those into this deck i'd probably feel like the deck could be a little more consistent. I will say though, this card does have a lot of card draw, so perhaps I haven't played it yet. Perhaps just the fact that you can draw into these uh, kill spells is strong enough, but it, they, it feels a little light. Like it feels like a lot of times I would want one or two more in here. So again, I haven't played it. I'll have to check it out. Love to hear your comments below though, if you have played this deck and what your experience has been with it. Um, I'll probably get a chance to play it this weekend. And then I'll probably have a better feel for what it's like and how I would like to upgrade it. But, uh, you know, cards like um, uh, a Crater Hoof Behemoth, of course, would be a good example of a card. But uh, that's a little more pricey. But even cheaper stuff like Overrun, right? Like that would be phenomenal in a deck like this. I think that would be really awesome, actually. So, uh, yeah, things like that to look out for that you could upgrade this. Obviously, upgrading mana bases is pretty straightforward. Like... Any of these lands, if you happen to have a shock land or you happen to have a fetch land or something, you could trade out. There you go. <laughs> That's definitely added value to it as well. So, um, yeah, I hope that helps a little bit. Like I said, if you want a true in-depth review, check out the link at the end of this video for when I talked about this deck in detail. And until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks as always for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.